the main point being here that uh, that this is uh, these are resources for you and it's resources for the community. We want to make sure that you are familiarized with both of these uh, resources as you uh, support your local communities out there. Now you're probably reasonably uh, adept at both of these now from the homework assignments and from uh, uh, your uh, preparations for this uh, talk today, but uh, um, uh, we'll try to give you a little more backstory on some of these things and, and help you uh, use those resources a little bit better. First of all, uh, JDocs has involved uh, a large number of people to put the materials together. <clears throat> uh, a lot of these folks are on the instrument teams. Some people are more general than that and working on uh, the, the more general support articles and so forth. But it's been uh, a huge effort by a lot of people here at Space Telescope and even some folks from outside on the instrument teams, uh, instrument definition teams and whatnot to help put these uh, materials together. So uh, there will not be a, an exam on, on this. This is just a, a flash slide to tell you that there were a lot of people involved and, and it's, the list seems to be getting bigger uh, all the time. <clears throat> I wanted to say a few words about our philosophy behind JDocs. The idea uh, is, uh, uh, is really that uh, um, uh, we started out with this idea of every page is page one. That's actually a technique of documentation. Uh, there are a lot of bullet points behind that, but I mean the idea is that you write each article to try to be a self-contained unit at a certain level of information. So for instance, you'll see overview uh, articles and then you will see subsequent articles under that that go into detail about various things that are talked about in the overview. Each thing that you land on in JDocs is intended to be sort of at a particular level, either a detailed level or something at a higher level. And understanding that is important because if you go and search and just land in the middle of 700 articles someplace, you may be coming into a detailed article and hopefully you'll be able to understand that and say, oh, I, wanted, I just wanted the, the top level and I'll show you how to find your way to the top level uh, article as well if, you, if that happens. But So every page is page one. The idea is that we have units, uh, each article is a unit. Uh, of a fairly standard uh, type. Uh, we have a, what's called an agile process. The idea of, of uh, web-based and, and uh, whatnot is so that we can quickly add new information into the system as it becomes available. The one exception to this is during your uh, open proposal period, we intend to hold JDocs as stable as possible so that you don't have a moving target that you're uh, reading about and, and planning to. But uh, in, the, in, in between times, as we learn new information, especially as, for instance, JWST comes online, uh, we, we want to be able to get information out to the community uh, as quickly as possible, and this agile process allows us to update individual articles where it makes sense to do so uh, in between the proposal uh, periods. Uh, obviously, it's uh, searchable. Uh, you could search from within JDocs, so we'll talk about that, or also obviously Google or another search engine can come in. Uh, but uh, again, you may just end up someplace in the middle, uh, and I want to show you how to kind of understand where you've landed if you come in from a search. <clears throat> Part of the every page is page one philosophy is this heavily linked strategy. It's kind of a Wikipedia uh, model here. Uh, it imposes some uh, uh, difficult uh, technical challenges on the system as we're updating articles and you have to keep the links uh, all working and whatnot. If you find a link that's not working uh, <clears throat> that we haven't found already, uh, you can ping us on help desk or something and we'll try to get it fixed as soon as possible. Uh, but uh, uh, the, you should be able to, to navigate <coughs> excuse me, from within these articles. Um, one of the things that we've really worked on uh, over the last uh, six months or so is making sure that we actually have links from within the primary tools directly into JDocs. And so uh, it's called context sensitive help. Uh, and uh, when you uh, uh, see a little, for instance, an APT, I'll tell you, or, or in the ETC, if you hover over one of the labels on some of the tags and you see a little question mark, that means it's got help. If you click on that tag, it will send you right into the JDocs article that talks about those topics. And so integrating all that in has been uh, a challenge as well, but I think that's going to be very use useful to everybody. And of course, our overall goal is just to uh, ensure that uh, uh, we have a, a well-informed uh, community. I'm not sure about the happy part. We'll see about that. <laughs> okay. Uh, <clears throat> This is just a slide to highlight, I think Ori wanted to highlight uh, the fact that there's a lot behind the scenes, that there's more than meets the eye to JDocs. And this is just a, a wave at uh, all the in incredible uh, IT support that it takes for something like this uh, to, uh, to work properly. 
uh, from website design and the template layouts to the you know software testing and making sure it all works uh, and uh, video help we've put together for you here uh, and uh, <clears throat> we will actually have PDFs printed up some people like PDFs believe it or not but uh, basically a roll-up of certain sections of JDocs into a PDF file for people that want that and actually the technical part of figuring that out to take these web pages and make it come out looking nice as a as a PDF is all that technical stuff is behind uh, JDocs and the other side of this is that uh, this is a two-way street. We're all learning, including the people here at Space Telescope. As a matter of fact, it, it struck me more than once that by the end of the week, you people will probably know more than a lot of people here in terms of the broad brush knowledge of JWST because people here are specialized on ETC or on APT or on one of the instrument teams and so forth. You're getting the general knowledge and you will have probably more knowledge available uh, to in your heads than, than a lot of people here do in terms of that, that broad brush. Uh, but as we have put JDocs together, it has forced us to think about what do we need to communicate? What, what is the validity of this number that we're saying? Where did that come from? What's the vetting of that? And so forth. And so there's been a lot of uh, uh, science learning uh, on our side as well as we have tried to put JDocs together uh, to support the community. So it has been a two-way street. Speaking of two-way streets, navigation and JDocs. Uh, can be challenging. I think we've done what we can to try to make it as simple as possible. This is the uh, Washington uh, subway system. Okay, there's a lot of places to enter, uh, a lot of places to get off. And uh, uh, we're tr gonna try to do what we can in JDocs here to provide you with a, a way to navigate and find your way uh, through the system. Now, I guess, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> I guess uh, Ori would wanted to just kind of walk you through uh, JDocs, and again, you've probably seen this stuff before, but maybe this will uh, give you a little bit different perspective on things. Of course, the top banner always tells you if you're actually in the official JDocs area as opposed to uh, somewhere else. Uh, there is a, a quick links section that uh, is a good place to start. Uh, uh, we're going to point to a getting started guide here uh, to the help videos to the pocket guide, which is a, 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 just a little pamphlet that's got overview of all the instruments and a lot of information in it. Uh, and uh, link to the help desk and getting back home. And then during the active proposal period, there will be a latest updates here. Anything that does get updated during the proposal period, we will point to it in a latest updates right from your quick links here. So on the top bar, quick links, and obviously the search bar is on this top section uh, as well. Okay, then we've got this navigation sidebar. This uh, is, has changed from the last almost cycle that we had. Uh, we have really reorganized uh, the navigation in JDocs and everything in JDocs is available from this side menu. Some of these carrots open up to lower levels and so forth, uh, but everything in JDocs is there so you know that you're seeing uh, what we have to offer you uh, if you uh, uh, search through that side bar. Uh, it is sorted sort of in a chronological order by category. We go from the proposal opportunities, cycle one call for proposals and so forth, science policies, to proposal preparation stuff, background basically, to the tools themselves, to the instrument information, and then at the bottom of that list would be the, the data uh, section, which of course is coming a little bit later when we get real data. The main body of the article also has some things that uh, you know should be obvious to you, but uh, but basically uh, this part of this every page is page one philosophy is that each page should start with a fairly short description of what is on that page, and the idea is that you go to a page and say, "Is this what I want?" And that first little section ought to tell you whether you got where you wanted to or whether you need to look around. If you need to look around, we then oftentimes have many many links within the article that will hopefully get you to where you want it to. So for instance, if this was uh, down into the, into the article tree someplace and you wanted to get back up to the top main level, here's the main article that, uh, so there's an organization to this. Uh, you can go to any page in JDocs and look at it and hopefully understand where you are, but there is a flow within JDocs if you care to follow that flow uh, as well. But you don't have to, there's no directionality necessarily to, to JDocs. Uh, that's followed of course then by what's on this page, a little table of contents. Uh, and then the main body uh, of the article follows uh, down below. Okay, as we go a little farther down, uh, 
Did that change? Latest updates publishing. Okay. Uh, so at the bottom of the page, he's just showing out at the bottom. Uh, if it's relevant, we have links to outside uh, technical documentation. Uh, and then this is pretty important. Uh, it says when the page was published and also when it was last updated. And again, during the proposal period, uh, you can see if something was updated very recently uh, that maybe you didn't see. Okay. And then the footer uh, at the very bottom of the page is just a uh, kind of a standard boilerplate thing. There are a couple of helpful links. This goes to the Space Telescope General uh, site and to the Help Desk uh, website uh, as well. So uh, that's our kind of a walkthrough of the, uh, the page structure. Uh, so here's uh, an example of a specific instrument now. Now Ori's on the MIRI team, so he chose a MIRI page. Each of the instruments kind of follows the same flow here. You're going to have an overview article for the instrument. You're going to have articles about the observing modes uh, of that instrument, which are specific to it. Uh, details about the in instrumentation itself, the hardware and uh, so forth. Uh, operations uh, notes, dithering, target acquisition, et cetera, which is different for the different uh, instruments. Uh, performance numbers, which is, uh, again, a challenge for us to keep these up to date. Of course, it's all pre-mission information uh, now because that's all we've got, but that'll get updated after, after launch. Uh, it will have links to the APT templates. Now, observation templates are for each of the observing modes, and we'll get into that in much more detail uh, later on. But uh, there's a page that describes each observing template field by field in detail uh, if you need that. And again, that's different for the different instruments and the different modes. Uh, then getting more general, there's observing strategies with that instrument and example science programs. And we'll be talking more about the example science programs here in a minute. Okay, so uh, how do you get started in this mess of 700 articles? If you just come to JDocs and start looking at it, uh, we're going to recommend that you come to what's now called the, the General Proposal Planning Workflow article, which really does step you through the entire process, although in a generic uh, sense, uh, since there's a lot of instrument-specific stuff and whatnot. Uh, but it, uh, uh, you know, there's no single way you're going to do this, but we have a recommended workflow here, and this General Proposal Planning Workflow article is a good place to start. We may actually change the title of that between now and the beginning of cycle one and just call it the Getting Started Guide, because I think it would be a little more visible uh, to people uh, that way. So just be aware that the title of that article may change, but the contents will be fairly similar here. And the idea is that you kind of should look at the call for proposals, the policy stuff, understand uh, from that perspective, uh, get into the ETC and exposure time estimating. Uh, there's a whole section here on methods and roadmaps, and I actually want to call out uh, the roadmaps here for a minute uh, because each method, imaging, sl spectroscopy, slitted spectroscopy, so forth, uh, each has their own generic roadmap that is a step-by-step -step guide for how you would decide which instrument to use for imaging, which, you know, you know, which filters are available, et cetera, and so forth. Uh, and uh, the roadmap is generic, but then as you get into these example science programs, what you're going to see is each of them steps through uh, in that same mode of the generic roadmap. And if the generic steps are not entirely appropriate for a given use case, it won't do that, obviously. But So it follows that flow from the generic roadmaps to example specific example science uh, programs. And again, we'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. Okay. Okay. Uh, then some of our pages are kind of trying to pull together information that you can get all in one place instead of having to sort through that navigation guide. So for instance, right now we have a, a page that's called Observing Strategies. And what this does basically is it just points you to each of the instrument observing strategies pages right from one spot in JDocs, and that may be helpful to see articles like that sometimes where we roll, roll up information into one page so you can find it quickly. Okay, the example science programs, I know you can't read this, but if you go to this page in JDocs, you'll be able to read it. Uh, we intend to have about uh, 15 different science use cases, out, use cases out there that will uh, use various instruments or combinations of instruments. Uh, and uh, these are detailed uh, examples uh, starting from science goals and working through how you actually lay it out in ETC and in APT. Uh, and uh, uh, it, it, I think this is going to be very helpful to people because there's, there's enough variety in these example programs that I think you'll find something similar enough to what you would like to do or what your, your uh, folks would like to do in your workshops 
that it's a good place to start. It's pretty detailed because we really do go through in detail. It starts out with an overview article uh, about the science use case and the goals of it and some of the decisions that maybe went into setting up uh, the choices that were made. And then there is a separate article on the ETC that walks you through step by step with an ETC example and a separate article that walks you through APT with all the decisions. And they, these 17 programs or 15 programs, whatever we have, uh, will have uh, an ETC workbook available within the ETC that you can download either as a starting point or to go along with your ETC guide and walk through it. And also there's an APT file available within APT for each of these programs that you can just load up and see exactly what the APT guide is telling you. So these are, this has been a lot of work. This has been a lot of the new content since the last time around has been in these example science programs. And again, they follow that same format for, uh, uh, for the roadmaps. Um, I think there's a little bit more on these. So, so here's how you find them, for instance, in APT. Uh, there's the file pull-down menu, and there's an example science proposals, which you slide over to, and then uh, those ones that we saw on the previous page are all going to be available right from directly within APT, and the file loads directly in. And it's similar for the ETC. There's a, there's a mechanism is a little bit different, but you'll see at the bottom of the page, you'll see all this this week, uh, there's a place to get at your example science programs from right within the ETC itself. Okay. Uh, here's just one example. This is actually kind of a, a special case uh, example. It happens to be the, uh, the SOS mode uh, of uh, uh, Neris here. There's the step-by-step -step guide. So there's the main article, which is the one at the top if you clicked on that. And then the subordinate articles here. There's one for the ETC. There's one for the APT. And that's what you'll typically see. This particular one also has uh, some information on a step-by-step -step guide for using the PEN EXO uh, software to uh, estimate your uh, exposure times for uh, planetary work. So that one happens to have three, that example. But most of them will have the ETC guide and the step-by-step -step APT uh, guide right in the side menu. Okay. Um, so just kind of continuing on through this proposal workflow then after you've uh, done that preliminary work, uh, target visibility, uh, if you need to look at target visibilities. Now most people that are looking at point sources that they're going to be available for JW at some time, you probably don't have to worry about target visibilities. But if you worry about the timing or you worry about the orientation of the field on the sky for your observation, these target visibility tools can help uh, a lot. And again, it just uh, uh, the, the workflow just kind of walks you through uh, that, I guess that's the top section there, uh, and points you to the right tools. Sometimes backgrounds uh, matter if you're background limited, and so there's a backgrounds tool, and we'll talk about that in the ancillary tools uh, talk this afternoon. <clears throat> okay, and then it moves on to the ETC uh, work, and it points you to the right resources there. Uh, and the same thing for APT, then it walks you through the resources need there, and um, now we're talking about the observation template articles. Again, this is one of those roll-up articles where one-stop shopping, where all the instrument modes uh, template uh, descriptions are listed in one page, so you don't have to go hunting through the sidebar for those. If you go to one of those, it looks like this. Uh, and again, it's just going to, as you scroll down here, it's going to go step-by-step step through that template uh, and tell you uh, whatever you need to know about filling out the values in that template. And again, links to places that give the detailed uh, information. Here's an example of what the context-sensitive help looks like. Basically, uh, again, we're using APT as the example here. ETC has some similar things, uh, perhaps not quite as many links, but has, has uh, links in ETC as well. Uh, but any of these labels in the front, if you hover over those, you'll see a little question mark, and that means that that's got context-sensitive help. If you click on any of those things, subarray, you go right into JDocs to uh, the relevant article. In this particular case, it depends on what template you're in. So if you were in the near, near cam one and you click click on subarray, you go to the near cam subarray article. If you're in MIRI, same, same, for, same thing. So you get the idea. So look for those little question marks. Depending on how you've got your cursor set, they may be kind of tiny. So keep an eye out for those. Uh, something else that we've really uh, uh, worked on a lot over the last uh, six or eight months here was to put together the video uh, tutorials. Uh, and so again, there's one page, if you scroll down on this page, there's a table that has all the video tutorials in one place 
for you. Uh, it has a link right here that goes to the JWST Observer YouTube channel, which is where the videos are hosted for the most part. Uh, and, uh, but again, we provide one-stop shopping where you can see what's available uh, in the table on that, on that page. Uh, these are typically five minutes, sometimes some of them get a little bit longer, five to ten minute uh, videos. Uh, again, they are structured so that there are overview videos for the tools if you're getting your people up to speed and you just want them to spend five, seven minutes and kind of get the basics without having to tell them. They can watch the video and, and uh, uh, get that general information, and then there are ones that dig deeper to the various aspects of both the ETC uh, and the APT and some of the other tools that we have available, some of the near spec specific tools in particular. Okay, how many people have actually looked at any of the videos at this point? Could I just get a, okay, uh, just general reaction. Helpful, good? Okay, good. Good to know it. Any feedback on that would be great, David. Uh, anyway, just to broad brush you here, so uh, there's a, actually there's a JDocs overview or uh, video as well. Uh, APT and Aladdin has a whole host of things going from overview articles down to the uh, various uh, specialty things. Same thing for ETC, a, a large number of articles. Uh, we're going to have a few more for uh, near spec soon uh, as well. And then there's a little special category over here. These actually have heritage back to the Hubble project, uh, and they were generic enough about APT and how it works and whatnot that we have kept those available in JDocs. These are not posted out on the YouTube channel, but in our, in our article here, uh, we do have some links to some additional things that yeah, you may find, uh, find it worth uh, looking at, okay? Okay, so for searching, um, uh, there was that search box on the front page that uh, that is you know gets you gets you started. You may actually see something right on the front page when you start typing into the to, into the search box that gets you where you want to go. Uh, but if you hit return, you go to a page that looks more like these pages here with uh, articles listed and uh, little uh, tags to give you an idea what's in that article. Uh, and uh, then there's a method of using the advanced search, which are clicking boxes on the sidebar here to narrow that search down if you want to do it that way. APT, of course, is used for Hubble proposing as well. And so the look and feel, uh, the fact that the, the tree editor is on the side and there's a main page and there's the toolbar at the top and so forth, will look similar to people that have done with Hubble. But the JWST observing system is completely different than Hubble. Hubble, of course, is governed by orbits. Low Earth or it's in low Earth orbit, and so you have these, these units of time that you work with, and for JWST, everything just gets strung together because it doesn't have uh, orbital viewing periods like that, and that drives the entire way that you specify observations and schedule them. And so uh, once you get beyond the generalities, uh, the JWST branch is completely, completely different than APT. Okay. Okay, so I'm just about ready to wrap up here. The uh, 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 targeted search, like I mentioned, uh, you, you know, if you, it, it, you know how search stuff goes, right? If you said JWST dithers, you're going to get 200 pages probably that come up out here, and that's not what you want, uh, and it's kind of hard to run through that whole thing. So if you really were saying, well, what I meant was near cam dithers, and you click the near cam box, and then you just see the near cam stuff and so forth, and you can work your way through that. Now, again, uh, I guess I didn't mention this when I had the navigation bar up here, but if you click on one of these articles, it takes you to that article, and it opens up the sidebar and bolds that article in the sidebar structure so you can kind of see it in context with other articles uh, that may be similar. Uh, and so, uh, you know, there are several articles that have Miri dithering because there's the different instrument modes and whatnot. So if you went to one that said Miri dithering, you got the top level article, but you could then see the, the mode specific ones underneath that and so forth. So, so that's uh, what we try to do on that sidebar to help you find both where you are when you click on an article and just come into JDocs, uh, you will see that article title bolded on the side. And also if it's in a sub, uh, sub menu, it'll have it opened up so that you can see the context there. And you can always use those little arrow things to open and close uh, sections of JDocs uh, in that side menu um, if you want to. <laughs>